we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, good morning. In order to prepare ourselves to celebrate the Holy Eucharist, let us acknowledge our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Cause the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose. Grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise. That amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where the true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The prophet Isaiah foresees the day when all nations will come and worship the Lord in his holy city. Jesus underlines the same message when he says that people from the ends of the earth will take their place at the feast in the kingdom of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, I know their works and their thoughts, and I come to gather nations of every language. They shall come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them. From them I will send fugitives to the nations, to Tarshish, Hot and Lud, to Masoch, Tubal and Javan, to the distant coastlands that have never heard of my fame or seen my glory. And they shall proclaim my glory among the nations. They shall bring all brothers and sisters from all the nations as an offering to the Lord, on horses and in chariots, in carts, upon mules and dromedaries, to Jerusalem, my holy mountain, says the Lord. Just as the Israelites bring their offering to the house of the Lord in clean vessels, some of these I will take as priests and Levites, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify Him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is His kindness toward us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Trials and sufferings can be means of purifying the faithful and instilling discipline. The author of the letter to the Hebrews invites Christians to stand fast and endure their trials. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. 
My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord, or lose heart when reproved by Him. For whom the Lord loves, He disciplines. He scourges every son He acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At the time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy, but for pain. Yet later, it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, that what is lame may not be disjointed, but healed. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. And with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus passed through towns and villages, teaching as he went and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has risen and locked the door, then will you stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. He will say to you in reply, I do not know where you are from. And you will say, we ate and drank in your company, and you taught in our streets. Then he will say to you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. And there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. When you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets, in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves cast out. And people will come from the east and the west, and from the north and the south, and will recline at table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. There is an interesting question in the Gospel today. Lord, will only a few people be saved? This is a question that we all normally ask as Christians. The question in the Gospel, as you heard, was asked by the Jews. Why? Now for the Jews, it was their faith that Jewish people are chosen people, they are the chosen people, and they are dear to God, and they firmly believed that the Gentiles would all be shut down and they are saved. The Jewish people believed 
that the kingdom of God belongs to them. But the reply of Jesus shocked them. He said that the entry to the kingdom can never be automatic, but is a result and the reward of a struggle. Jesus speaks of a struggle in the gospel. Jesus says, strive to enter through the narrow gate. And he further says, many try to enter, but will not be strong enough. So in the answer or of Jesus, as we heard in the gospel, apparently there are two gates that we have and we are called to make a choice. One is a wider gate, big gate, and the other is a narrow gate. Now what is he talking about? To understand what Jesus is referring to, I would like to take a statement from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, where Jesus says, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. I know you must have heard this one. But only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So Jesus is telling his Jewish people that simply being a Jew, simply by belonging to the family of Abraham, they they would not be allowed to enter the kingdom. It's not automatic. But they had to follow the will of God, which means faithfully following the God's commandments. As we all know, they have ten commandments and they had to follow. Now Jesus' teaching, the teaching of Jesus, challenges us too. May I ask you, how many are you Christians? Can you raise your hand if you are a Christian, a Roman Catholic? How many of you? Most of you are Roman Catholics, right? Most of you, I hope at least more than 90% of you. Now, let's take this gospel to our own lives. What makes you a Christian. Christian is a follower of Jesus. Jesus is the master of every Christian. We are not followers of bishops and priests or any other religious leader. Because some people, I have heard many times, because some people would think, oh, I am a friend of bishop so and so. I am a friend of priest so and so. I have a cousin priest so and so. Those, therefore, I am a good Christian. No. Christian is the one who follows Jesus and only Jesus. And more importantly, the one who does what Jesus wants, one who does what Jesus is asking him to do, that's a Christian. Now tell me, how many of you are Christians? Raise your hand. If you have people in your lives that you cannot forgive, can you be a good Christian? If you are a person who lies, or spreading lies. If you are a person who destroys others' lives with gossips, stories, chismes, can you be a good Christian? Can we raise our hand? Yes, I am a good Christian. If you do this, if you are somebody who continue to be in a sinful life, wrong relationships, addictions, gambling. Can you be a good Christian? 
and more importantly if you are a person who does not see Jesus in others who does not treat the other with respect can you be a good Christian I tell you with certainty you will have difficulty in entering the kingdom now you all are in the minor basilica of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary Manavak some of you might be here for the first time who are the first timers some of you might be here for the first time and some of you might be regular regular pilgrims who come here very often Manawa, this shrine, this basilica, is truly a blessed, holy place where you can feel the presence and the love of Mama Mary. I, just like other brothers you see around, had my novitiate here. In 2005, I had my seminary life, life here. I was here for 14 months as a brother and around 3-4 months here as a deacon. In my experience, many people come here with a lot of intentions and requests. We believe that whatever we ask through her intercessions, God would give us. That's our faith. We ask Mama Mary so many things because we believe that God would give us what we need through the intercession of Mama Mary. I too used to pray here. I sought her intercessions. Of course, she truly intercedes for us powerfully. Mother Mary is the most powerful intercessor before God. But then, we always forget that her intercession comes with a challenging demand. Simply because you come to Manavag, pray the rosary, attend the mass, make a donation, she would not intercede for you. She demands something else. Now, which is the narrow gate and difficult gate. Do you remember the story of Cana? What happened at the wedding at Cana? People came to her with a request. They said, there is no enough wine. What was her answer? We all have to remember this, including me when we ask things from Mama Mary. What was the answer? When you are here, ask her whatever you need. Tell her all your problems you have. Tell her all your pains and sufferings. But do not forget what she would tell you. What would Mama Mary tell you today? before you leave this basilica. Very simple. She would give us the same answer she gave to the people at the wedding at Cana. What was her answer? What did she say? Do whatever Jesus tells you. Do whatever Jesus tells you. Now this is the challenging part. Coming to Manawa, praying the rosary, attending the mass are the wider gate, the bigger gate. These are very easy. Anybody can do it. But to do what Jesus tells you is the narrow gate. So my dear pilgrims and friends, you're coming here to Manawag, visiting Mama Mary, 
would be totally useless and pointless if you do not do what Mama Mary demands. Our Mother, Blessed Virgin, intercedes for us. For sure she does. And all your prayers, all your prayers, I tell you, would be answered. It's a sure promise. But first, do what Jesus wants you to do. Otherwise, you might visit Manavag very regularly, but nothing happens in your life. So let us ask Mama Mary to give us strength, to give us wisdom, and to give us understanding, and to give us courage to, to, to do what Jesus is asking us to do. If Jesus is asking us to change our life today, we must have the courage and strength to do. If Jesus is asking you to give up something today, we must have the courage and strength to do. If Jesus is asking us to stop something today, we need the courage and strength to do. And that's why Jesus in the Gospel says, very few, very few have the courage. They will not be strong enough. So ask yourself, before I ask the help of Mama Mary, before I ask Mama Mary to intercede for me, before I make my request in front of Mama Mary in this basilica, am I strong and courageous enough to do what Jesus is asking me to do? Please all stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds with the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. The way to your kingdom, Father, requires a decision here and now. A decision we must make moment by moment, always and everywhere. Help us commit and persevere towards the difficult but fulfilling choice, as we say, faithful God, sustain us. Faithful God, sustain us. Loving Father, empower and guide Pope Francis, bishops, priests, deacons, and lay people, that through your Spirit we may make the best choices for the Church, even if such choices are difficult to make. We pray. Faithful, Faithful God, God, sustain us. us. Loving Father, illumine those who govern that they may manifest your will for us in their crafting of policies that protect and promote human dignity and in their compassionate implementation of the Constitution, we pray. Faithful God, sustain us. 
Loving Father, may those of us who are currently undergoing great suffering materially, emotionally, or spiritually find consolation in our faithfulness to love and serve one another. Help us to always choose you, to always choose love, most especially in difficult times. We pray. Faithful God, to sustain us. For those who have left the order and for the Dominican family and the family of our brothers, we pray. Faithful God, to sustain us. For the intentions of the devotees and pilgrims of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag and for our personal intentions. We pray. Faithful God, sustain us. Loving Father, embrace those who have gone ahead of us, especially those who are dear to our hearts. We pray. Faithful God, sustain us. Father, may we seek first your kingdom here and now, that like your Son, our lives too may become a consolation for each other as we journey back into our heavenly homeland. In your spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Dad. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, Bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father. Almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Yeah. 
blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Socrates, our bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver 
us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you, brother. sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter. But only say the word, and my soul shall. Please stand. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, 
and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the announcement. Dear devotees of Our Lady of Manawag, the October Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag will be on October 2, 2022. We invite you to participate in our Novena Masses, which will start from September 23 to October 1, 2022. If you wish to sponsor one or several Masses, you may fill out the form at the counters for Masses area and submit it with your donation where you will be provided with an acknowledgement receipt. Or you may visit our website, www.manawagminorbasilica.org for the online PAMISA. All names of donors and sponsors will appear in the electronic souvenir program. Thank you very much for your continued support. Please all stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. We go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We will now have the prayer for the blessing of the sick. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness towards our sick brothers and sisters. Free them from all illness and restore them to good health through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawa, so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us also bless the religious articles and the rosaries. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawa. May these rosaries, images, candles, oils, and other religious articles be blessed and made holy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.